Now to take a departure from our traditional format, we had the opportunity to speak with a civil rights icon, Ms. Joan Maholland. Ms. Maholland is a lifelong activist with a hand in some of the most influential moments during the 1960s civil rights movement. Maholland rode alongside the Freedom Riders and withstood being housed on death row in one of the South's most notorious and awful prisons for breaching the peace. You've been an activist since a very young age, spending most of your teens and your 20s fighting the good fight during the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Was there a specific moment that pushed you to get involved? The moment that I knew I was going to take action came when I was about 10 visiting grandma in the old company logging town of Oconee, Georgia. And my girlfriend and I went sneaking off into the colored, that was the polite term, into the colored part of town. It was creepy with the way folks just disappeared when they saw these two little white girls coming. But then we got to the school. It was a one room shack, never had any paint on it. No glass or screens in the windows, just wooden shutters, no playground equipment, no running water, no electricity. It was not fair. Out the other end of town was a brand new brick school for the white kids, fanciest building for miles around, and I knew this was not doing what we learned at Sunday school about treating people the way we wanted to be treated and that eventually I would do something to help make things better for everybody. And that moment came with the sit-ins in 1960. Now notorious image, Mahalan sat behind John Salter and Ann Moody at the whites only counter at Woolworth's Diner as violence began to break out. The trio is shown being ruthlessly harassed and assaulted by a swelling crowd of young white men, a moment that sparked Dr. King's 1963 march on Washington. This is one of the many crucial moments in the history of Mahalan's incredible life. Seeking to do her part to help integration across America, Ms. Mahalan attended Tougaloo College, an HBCU in Jackson, Mississippi. Ms. Mahalan, can you tell us more on your part to help integrate and your experience at Tougaloo? The riots, the tear gas and everything, when colored students applied and were admitted to white colleges under court order, it just got to me. I knew that integration, if it was real, should be a two-way street. And maybe I'd go and apply to some colored college. Well, I talked my idea over with my friends and the leadership of the uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And they thought it was a good idea. And someone said, well, if you're going to do it, you just may as well go to Mississippi because those students haven't done anything yet, like sit in. So I applied to Tougaloo and was accepted, even though my high school back in Virginia just very pointedly refused to send my transcripts. I was admitted, I went on the Freedom Ride to Mississippi, spent the summer in jail on death row at Parchment, and got out just in time to go enroll at campus. I was I heard the first white student. There was some feeling that, well, maybe I wouldn't have to study as hard as they did because I had gone to white schools and Duke University. As Camille said, when I saw you studying just as hard in the library every night as the rest of us, I knew you were okay. During her time at Tougaloo, Miss Mahalan became the first white member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Ms. Mahalan, can you let us know what led you to join? Well, the sororities and fraternities were sort of the social basis on campus, and most of my roommates, just by luck of the draw, ended up being Deltas. And there wasn't much difference between a civil rights meeting where the Deltas were predominated and um, a sorority meeting, but they we were all active in it together. When I was invited, I said, sure, I'd like to join, so I did. 
The climate of America has changed vastly over the last 60 years. What differences do you see from America 60 plus years ago compared to the current climate that we're experiencing right now in the USA? It was an awful lot of anti-black feeling sort of across the board amongst whites. And it was only an issue of black and white. Then it wasn't a question of Hispanics not speaking English and Muslims not being Christians. It was based strictly on skin color. That's changed now. There are lots of people to venture disgust and anger on if, you got, if you're burdened with that. Is there any advice you'd like to give to next generation activists? Have clearly stated goals, not just a protest, but a, a goal of what you want to accomplish stated for the public. Not just what you're against, but what you are for. Keep at it. Don't just be a one-time show up. Support the causes, both physically and um, in your daily activities and in your money, support what you believe in. When you look back, what are you most proud of as a result of your decisions to make a difference? That I went ahead and did what I thought was right. Of course, I'm proud that we did get segregation outlawed. Um, I just wish we could have taken care of all the racism that was behind it. If you were to pick a one moment from your life as an activist, what moment sticks out to you the most? Something that still impacts you to this day? Oh my, I think there was the march on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, Selma, Alabama, and the police on horseback attacked the marchers, beat people unconscious, and it was so bad that President Lyndon Johnson, a Southerner himself, went on national TV, the nation came to a standstill and watched as he talked about the beating of Mama Boynton on that bridge and said, and we shall overcome the anthem of the civil rights movement and the death knell of the Southern Democratic Party that had propelled him to the presidency. And then he leaned forward a little more and repeated himself, and we shall overcome. For a white Southerner to, to do that was amazing. That made him a true hero to me. And how about your life today? Can you give us a little insight? Well, my life is still, in many ways, governed by the movement. From everything from the books I read to what I say, just on a daily basis. And my sons are in their own ways involved. I can't march anymore, but I'm invited to be speakers at places and I, I'm there with it, yeah. Your son began the Joan from Power Mahalan Foundation. Can you inform us about the foundation and how people can support? Send money, of course. He doesn't pocket any of that money, folks. That money goes to the foundation. It is my son's creation to raise money and put materials in public schools about the civil rights movement, teach history, real history, to the students. You can find more information about the Joan Trumpower Mahalan Foundation by visiting their website. Thank you, Ms. Joan, for your time.